Welcome back to Totally Original Motherfucking Black Ops Cold War Welcome Zombies. Back. Welcome back to Modern Warfare Black Ops Cold War Zombies. War to War. Hello. D Machine. Hi guys. Die Machine. Die um, Machine. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the last thing that we're gonna cover here, uh, the only thing we're gonna cover in this weapon class thing is has to do with the knife. So remember what I've been saying this whole entire time. Spawn in with the combat knife. Because Put ketchup in your mac and cheese. Yeah. Because you'll get a one hit kill knife uh up into up uh, up up to and I think including round ten or whatever. And um or maybe eleven or twelve, I don't remember. Um and when you get kills with your knife, you're getting maximum points, right? right. That's what you've been doing, right? Of course. Yeah. Like when you're playing it by yourself. Of course. Um what if I told you Don't tell me that uh, you don't actually need to do that. What? Yeah. So the reason that we covered how to knife and yada yada that was but a to make found... Zane look like a no 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 no, no no that was a foundation that was oh. something that you need to get used to because it's that's the way it is in every zombies game right? Okay. But there's actually something about this game that's peculiar. In most zombies games, you knife your zombie, and then you can get the Bowie knife later. You can buy the Bowie knife mm -hmm. uh, to do more melee damage. In this, you gun butt your zombies. Cool. So they'd still die on round one, but past round one, they won't die anymore. Instead, you have to equip and spawn in with the combat knife. That seems a little weird, right? Yes. So, have you looked through these at all? No. That's good, because this is going to be a surprise to you. The melee upgrades... Replace uh, gun butt with melee knife, which means you're going to be doing more damage when you m go to melee weapons while you have a gun equipped. Increase primary melee weapon damage by 10%. And that third one is the most important. What? Replace gun butt with bowie knife. That means that your regular melee, even with a gun equipped, is going to be a knife. And it's going to be doing a one hit kill past round 10. So it's mm -hmm. like really good. Now there's two downsides to that. Number one, uh, you can't upgrade your knife that way. So if you were planning on leveling uh, up your knife and getting all the camos, tough shit. <laughs> um, and number two, more importantly, uh, you can't pack a punch your melee attack. Uh, when you spawn in with the knife, and you pack a punch that thing three times, and you increase the damage yeah. uh, uh, tier of it and everything. You can one hit kill like past round thirty. So, um, in fact, I have played a game where I got to round thirty and X filled with just the knife. I will be fair; I did use the uh, do, 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 the grenade launcher when I was X filling. Um, but point is that uh, like the knife, if you're good at it, you're you can get really far um but having that bowie knife means that you can spawn in with any gun you want um like the gallo for instance and remember how we've been talking about how you should equip the this gun with that attachment and this gun with that attachment one of the things you asked me uh well we were um recording the last time but this got cut out was how do you like, you're talking about equipping these attachments, but how do you do that and spawn in with the knife at the same time? Because if you don't spawn in with that gun, you don't get to decide what attachments are on it. Yeah. Um. This is how. I didn't say that then, but I'm saying it now. This is how. You get to level 50 so that you can upgrade this, and then you upgrade it all the way. And now you can spawn in with whatever gun and whatever set of attachments you want, and you are free from spawning in with the knife. Mm. Um, so I highly implore you to do that. After you've upgraded Jug all the way, uh, you can upgrade the knife, um, all the way. Uh, the, there was one thing, by the way, that I just totally, I was going to say it and then I totally forgot. Um, remember that these upgrades, uh, are permanent. So every, this is what I, I, after I upgraded the Juggernog and then, uh, once I got to level 50, I upgraded the knife, but, um, along the way I always made sure to upgrade all my perks because these are going to be helping you no matter what you're doing so once you buy all of those upgrades for jug mm -hmm. every time you put jug on you're always going to have those benefits so there's really it, it's really important to to upgrade all of these these would be what I would be focusing spending your ethereum crystals on I would do the uh, the uh, 
ammo mods and then uh, other weapons like the sniper rifles and light machine guns and stuff like that last yeah. um and not focus so, so much on them so jug and then the melee upgrade yes and then back yeah. to the other perks exactly and then back to the other perks um because the jug is just too fucking useful what about them field upgrades the field upgrades I I think that you should all be I think you and all the people watching this if you're new players should be using Ether Shroud regardless and uh and it's fine enough as it is like it it works does its job as it stands so I don't think that it's super important but once you upgraded all the perks and you've upgraded the knife all the way maybe upgrade like the shotgun or something all the way or whatever weapon class you primarily use um and then maybe go upgrade ether shroud i would say don't start upgrading the the other field upgrades uh except for ether shroud and ring of fire don't start upgrading the rest of them until you have nothing else to upgrade gotcha um because you obviously there's a finite amount of things you can upgrade once you have uh upgraded um everything you apparently stop earning ethereum crystals so um the game knows I like it though. I really like the sort of permanent Game. permanent upgrade system. I really like that. Yeah. Um, because that's not something we've really had in in a zombies game before. Uh, yeah, I don't think you could really do that in Black Ops Four. Um, but anyways, you definitely couldn't like uh do permanent upgrades for your like perks and stuff. Um, so let's go over the equipments. Um, so stim shot. Self-explanatory, it heals you. Probably the most useful equipment. It's the one that I always run, and it's the one that I always recommend uh, uh, people run, especially mm -hmm. new players. Uh, stun grenade. Um, it it stuns all the zombies for like a couple seconds. I am not gonna lie, it's useful, but it's not near as useful as stim. Uh, it kills fogated zombies. <laughs> oh my gosh, dude! I think you made that exact joke last time we covered <laughs> this because this is the second time now. Well, I'll make it again. This, so. Um, but, uh, uh, the decoy, um, makes, it's kind of like a little mini monkey bomb. It makes all the zombies, it makes all the zombies run to it, but here's the catch. It doesn't have an infinite range, so it will only make the zombies that are close to it run to it. Right. It doesn't last as long as a monkey bomb and it doesn't explode. Um, so decoys are useful, but I think stims are more useful and I think monkey bombs are also more useful. Uh, and then, of course, Symbol Monkey, which is a monkey bomb, does exactly what I just said. Makes all the zombies run towards it. Very useful if you are trying to get out of a pinch. Right. But keep in mind, unlike the decoy, which is like a regular grenade that you just press L1 and he'll throw it, the monkey bomb has to be wound up. That's something I didn't mention to you. So you need to give yourself plenty of time. If you get trapped, if you get caught... And the zombies are all surrounding you, and you try to use that monkey bomb, you're going to go down before you can get it off. I see. So you need to know ahead of time, I'm going to be trapped, and I'm going to throw a monkey bomb. And that sounds bizarre, but you get a sixth sense for for that kind of thing. So, um, um, Dumb question. Do Is the monkey bomb thrown, or is it set down? Like it's a, thrown. So, no. so you have to, like aim it and then he'll toss it gotcha. uh, in a direction so if you want it to be like closer to you or further away then you aim up or down gotcha. like you would with a normal grenade yeah uh lethals tomahawk self-explanatory it's an, an instant kill on a zombie uh but and you can go pick it up afterwards but once you get past round 10 and the zombies are flooding in they become very useless um, unless you're trying to like complete challenges or something like that. Uh, the frag grenade, self-explanatory. I always cook them, but don't cook them too long because you will go down if it explodes in your hand. Yeah. And you do not want to be the guy who wastes a self-revive because you blew yourself up with a frag grenade. No, I don't. Um, Semtex, a lot more safe and it sticks to things. You can't blow yourself up with it, uh, but it doesn't do as much damage as a frag grenade. Um... The uh, uh, Molotov, I don't really use Molotovs very often. It'll light a big group of zombies on fire or any zombie that runs through the fire. The catch is that it stops doing a significant amount of damage to the point where once you're on like round tw uh, 20 or something, it's like borderline useless. Um, who knows? Maybe they've buffed the damage since I last used a, a Molotov. I don't know. But And then C4. C4 is the lethal equipment that I recommend using. So to, to reiterate... 
that's stim shot for non-lethal and c4 for lethal those are the ones that i recommend using and uh, the c4 does massive amounts of damage and you can blow up a whole entire fucking 24 group of zombies uh with just one c4 wow. it works like it does in the multiplayer so when you throw it you have to double tap square to detonate it mm-hmm. um do not be close to it when you detonate it because it will do a shit ton of damage to you and you can easily down yourself with it if you're not careful um so for if you're not comfortable with that then maybe just stick with like semtex uh and like throwing axes or something because you can't down yourself uh with them um support so this is the big thing that I wish you guys would have been able to see Zane's reaction. Yeah. Uh, it's score streaks that you can now use in zombies. This is the first. Fucking insano. Yeah. Um, so they work very similar to similarly to how they do in uh, the multiplayer. So combat bow. Um, it lights zombies on fire as well as does a little bit of explosive damage. But honestly, I don't think it's super worth it uh, for the amount of salvage that it costs. Um, sentry turret sucks ass in both this and the multiplayer. Um, I guess we figured out unless you're playing hardcore, because holy shit, the sentry turret absolutely dominates if you're playing hardcore. Yeah, it fucking <laughs> becomes the best player on the field. Yeah. Um, but in this, it just doesn't kill zombies very fast, and then it dies before you know it. So, uh, war machine. Oh my god, the best fucking one in my opinion, uh, because it's got like twelve shots. And you can annihilate entire groups of zombies with it. It's super useful. Uh, Not to mention, for both the war machine and the combat bow, you can shoot a couple times and then press triangle to change back to your normal weapon. Mm -hmm. And it maintains the ammo count. So then if you press uh, right on the D-pad again to bring it back up, uh, you can still use it. So there's not a timer on it or anything. Um, And then uh, a cruise missile... Uh, this is something that they added. Um, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's a predator missile. Uh, so you can fire a couple missiles off and then you have a main missile that will come down on the zombies. Uh, and then the, uh, uh, chopper, chopper gunner. That's fucking bananas. Yeah. Both of these function similar in the sense that he pulls the computer out. When you pull the computer out, zombies will ignore you. So you don't have to worry about going down. It's a very good thing to have when you're camping in case you get in a bind. Because if you're camping and you use Ring of Fire instead of Ether Shroud, um, you can just use your chopper gunner and they'll ignore you. And then you can lay waste and just start uh, annihilating all the zombies, the Megaton, whatever is down there. Um, and then uh, a stim sh- or self-revive. Now, you can only have one lethal... One non-lethal, one type of lethal, one type of non-lethal, and one type of uh, score street or support or whatever uh, equipped at a time. So if you have a, a bow, for example, and then you buy a war machine, it'll override it, except for the self-revive. That's down in the corner next to your health. You can only have one self-revive at a time, hence why it says, uh, mm. uh, or why it has a little uh, dot on there. Um, but... Uh, you cannot buy them until you reach level 50, I think. So once you reach level 50, then you can just buy a self revive. If you go down until then, you're going to have to get used to only having two lives. That's one. That's twice the amount of lives you'd normally have in a, in a game of zombies. But, um, but so yeah, the self revive, obviously always have one on you at a time. Um, but these, uh, the tacticals and lethals use, um, or cost regular salvage to buy that's the green stuff so if a zombie drops salvage and it's green or highlighted in green that's common salvage and that's the the z there 960 that's how many points i have it's technically called essence in this game for some reason uh next Hmm. to that that hundred that's common salvage and then next to that is rare salvage you pick up common salvage in groups of hundreds uh you pick up rare salvage in groups of 10 um, so the support streaks, those all cost rare salvage. That includes the self revive. So you can see the combat bow costs 50. That means I have to pick up 50 things of rare salvage. Uh, the, uh, uh, frag, uh, costs 250. That means that, um, oh, did I say a hundred? I meant 50. They, they, they drop in things of 50. So that means you have to pick up five things of uh uh, common smell of common salvage yeah um so the other thing to keep in mind is that you don't or you don't just have to buy things from the crafting table 
everything that I uh, just showed you here, including these, can technically be dropped. Um, now, here's the catch with that. Zombies can drop, regular zombies and megaton zombies can drop all of the lethal and tactical equipment, as well as self-revives. They can technically drop self-revives. Um, but you have to be playing a specific mode for them to be able to drop uh, the other support streaks, either Cranked or Jingle Hells, which are limited time modes, so I don't know that that really matters. Um, but you can get support streaks out of the mystery box, which is something that uh, you can't say for um, the, uh, uh, I think, any of the lethal and tacticals. I mean, I don't honestly use the mystery box so much in this game, so I... I uh, could be wrong about that, but I don't think so. I've, ne I've never gotten a lethal or a tactical out of the mystery box. So the, take that. Um, again, I might be wrong about that, but if I am right about that, then keep that in mind because normally the way that you'd get monkey bombs is out of the mystery box. Ah, yes. uh, but in this, instead you can technically pick them up off of zombies, um, but you can also buy them using the, the common salvage. Um, so now uh, I'm just going to work my way... Uh, 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 over to the uh, the pack a punch, um, and I'm gonna show you uh, uh, the like ammo mod stuff. I'm not gonna pack a punch the gun if I don't have to. I've I've honestly never bought an ammo mod without pack a punching the gun. So <laughs> hopefully I can buy the ammo mod without pack a punching it. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, but we'll see. And then I'll show you what um, what I'm talking about with. Uh, uh, like the at least the dead shot or the dead shot the dead wire thing um and then uh, uh we'll talk about a couple other things that um that we'll see along the way now drops that's something that i covered briefly at the beginning like in episode one or, t or something yeah. uh i'm gonna talk about them in a little bit more detail here um the that points drop that i just picked up uh it that just gives you a thousand points um, and I don't believe that it, that gets doubled with a double points. Um, double points gives you double points for 30 seconds or whatever, yeah. 25 seconds. Uh, when you get a double points, obviously meleeing zombies or getting headshots is the way to go to maximize points. Um, and then, uh, uh, Carpenter gives you 250 points as well as it repairs all the barriers in the map yeah. the reason that it gives you 250 points is because when you repair a barrier you get 10 points from that from every board that you oh, put on the barrier so um so that's actually a way in this there aren't very many barriers and in some of the games like world war ii there aren't any barriers at all so there's isn't even a carpenter pick pick up in that map or in that uh, game um but uh so i just picked up a, an axe there and i'll show you it just Yep, kills wow. the zombies, and it's like it that's a double point, <laughs> right? And it's like that's cool and all, but uh, when I've got a horde of zombies rushing towards me, I don't really think that's useful to kill a single zombie with it. Yeah. Now you can technically kill, I think, like up to three if it hits the ground and like knocks into a couple other Let's ones, see. but it's not something that happens every time. So, um, but uh, uh, the carpenter power up, um is basically you could think of it as just like an extra 250 points um but three points yeah one thing to keep in mind uh with the barriers is that's a good way if you're like 100 points shy uh for pack a punching or something go find some barriers to rebuild uh because you'll get your 100 points by just rebuilding barriers right. um but rebuilding barriers how many points you get from them uh, or how many times you can get the 10 points uh, depends on what round you're on. The higher the round, the more boards you get 10 points from. After, like, if you're on round one, I think you can only repair, like, five boards or something before it stops giving you the 100 points or the 10 points per board. I see. Um, this is a max ammo. Uh, it refills your ammo. In this game, Black Ops 4 and World War II, you do not have to reload your gun. It will also refill your clip. In every other Zombies game, always reload your clip before you pick up the max ammo. Otherwise, you're just wasting, you're not getting the maximum amount of ammo mm -hmm. from the max ammo. Then it's more like a 95% ammo, um, not a max ammo. <laughs> um, and the, uh, the last one, I think, is a nuke. Um, and uh, getting a nuke uh, obviously kills all the zombies on the map. 
Um, but it also uh, gives you 400 points because you're not getting the points from killing the zombies. Uh, I have mentioned before uh, sort of strategies on what you want to do with these. Uh, uh, like, I think in the first or second episode, I mentioned yeah. like when to get a double points or when to, to pick up. Oh, I forgot about insta kill. Um, stuff like that. Uh, nuke. Same thing, you know, like, if you've got a ton of zombies left and you're trying to get points, don't pick up the nuke, because you're going to get more po points from killing three zombies than you are uh, from picking up that nuke. Uh, if you have a double points, it will give you 800 points for the nuke instead of 400. Mm. So uh, it's always good to, if you see a double points and a nuke, pick up the double points before you pick up the nuke, if you were planning on picking up the nuke at all. Um, so that's... And then insta-kill, of course, you kill the zombies in one hit. I don't really recommend knifing them on insta-kill uh, unless you really know what you're doing un or you're on a lower round because, uh, frankly, it's a good way to get yourself killed gotcha. um, because, you know, it's a horde of zombies chasing after you. Yeah. You gotta take it seriously. Yeah. Um, They're trying to kill you. Yeah. Uh... But so, um, what I usually do during an insta-kill is, uh, I just fucking start murdering zombies as fast as I can. Whoops, of course. You see that? That's, that's a good example of, uh, uh, why it is really useful to have Jug, and mm. also to have that extra hit from Jug. I'm mm. so used to it now that I kind of get more ballsy than I really should be. I also am, you know, using this 1911 here instead of uh, a knife, so which I'm more used to using at this point. Um, mm -hmm. But the, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not making excuses for why I went down. I'm sort of saying like, keep that in mind. How fast I went down there. Yeah. It was like instant because I got hit by three zombies at one time, basically. Um, so that's something to keep in mind, especially when you're learning. Uh, stay away from the zombies. Stay as far away from them as you can. Absolutely. Um, and when you're training and stuff like that, when you go down, it, that's always going to be why you go down. It's going to be because you were trying to run past them when you really shouldn't have been or whatever. So just keep that in mind, that uh, the key to staying alive is staying away from the zombies. Um, Don't tell me twice. So uh, you sound like you're being facetious. Don't tell me lie. again. <laughs> you're like, yeah, sure. Can I go home? <laughs> no, I'm being very serious. I, I'm afraid of the zombies. Yeah. Um, so now we're going to head up. Uh, oh, obviously, you can buy weapons off the walls. That's something that I didn't uh, talk about. Um, the only reason that, uh, that that is even worth mentioning, frankly, is because uh, in this game, there's... Um, it works a little bit differently. You don't just buy the weapon off the wall. You're buying a weapon and a set of attachments. So it says tier two damage, three attachments. Yeah. So that gives you a random set of three different attachments, as well as it's a tier two damage weapon. That means that um, it's going to be doing more damage than a base weapon. There's up to five tiers. Uh, green is tier two, blue is tier three, purple is tier four, and, uh, orange or yellow or whatever is tier five. Um, you can upgrade the tier, the damage tier of every single gun, uh, through something that I'll show you in a second. So do not worry about, like, you know, if you get a, if you buy a gun off the wall, like I'm going to buy this gallo here, and it's tier three, and it's like, oh, you know, you get a the gun out of the box or something you hit the box and then you get um uh, uh, a tier four version of it just swap it out you know it's not a big deal but if you don't want to because maybe you already pack a punch this one then just go upgrade it using salvage it's not a big deal um okay. and then uh here's another crafting table where you can buy uh the uh, lethals and non-lethals and stuff um this is another thing that we we talked about that has been remained hidden this entire time the trial computer <laughs> um so the trial computer uh basically you spend the points on it it goes up in price as you go through the rounds and then it'll give you a random trial basically it'll give you an area and say kill zombies in this area or survive in this area for a certain amount of time the better you do on the trial the better reward you get 
and then you can go to the reward computer uh, next to it, and there are four of them in here, one for each player, uh, and you can get a reward. Um, the more trials you do, and the better you do in those trials before you compl uh, complain, before you <laughs> uh, uh, claim your reward, the higher the reward will be. That could be uh, a power-up, like a max ammo or something. It could be a gun, like the Wonder Weapon. There's plenty of different things that it can give you as a reward. Mm. Um, so, if you are interested, you can fuck around with the trial computer. Honestly, I never really mess around with it because, again, it's one of those things where I just don't really need to. I'm not incentivized to do it because it's pretty easy for me to get everything that I want to get without needing to uh, like have to try to cheese my way through it. That's one of the things that like older zombies games definitely do a lot where it's like, I want to get the wonder weapon, but the only way to do that is to do this big long Easter egg or whatever, but you can get it out of the box. So I'm going to hit the box a hundred times oh. to see if I can get it early. And if I get lucky and I get it on my first or second try, then fucking hell yeah. It saved me a bunch of headache right. doing the Easter egg to get it. So, uh, this bench by the here, by the way, here is a, here. Uh, an Easter egg bench. Uh, it has to do with building a thing for the Easter egg. You can only use it to build Easter eggs. Yeah, um, we'll go over, the, over that in the next uh, step. Um, I'm just going to... Uh, and we'll also... I'll explain how to build the Pack-A-Punch machine in the next step as well. I have been I know I've been, been ignoring it. At this point, Zane probably already knows how to build the Pack-A-Punch machine because <laughs> um, he, you know, has seen me do it so many times. Uh, when you're in the Dark ether, these are ether Crystals. Whoa! When you melee them, they will drop things like zombie essence, which is points, uh, or um, uh, equipment. They might even drop weapons or perks. There's an armor plate, like I was talking about, that mm -hmm. can refill your armor. Um, yes, you heard that right, folks. You can get perks out of these crystals sometimes. Interesting. So, definitely useful. When, oh, you're, yes, in, perk. when you're in the dark ether always be slapping those fucking ether crystals to see what they're going to give you. <laughs> Spank those crystals. Yeah. Um, and then Okay. So hopefully I can buy a weapon mod uh, without pack a punching my weapon. There's only a couple other things that we really need to go over in this step. So uh, yes, I can. Okay. Nice. So I'm going to equip dead wire on here. Um, and then I'm going to go over. Where's the light? Where and uh, what? Oh, it's right there. That blue light. Oh, I see. So it adds that to every single gun. Uh, and then it'll turn red once it's been used. So here's the uh, arsenal upgrade or whatever. You can buy armor and you can also upgrade the damage tier of your weapon. And it costs... Either common salvage or high-grade salvage. It depends on what upgrade you're on. So for armor, for example, it costs 500 uh, regular common salvage. I've got 850, so I can do the first armor upgrade. And then it's cost 1,000 for the second one. And then for the third one, I believe it costs uh, either 250 or 500 high-grade salvage. So they can technically drop armor, like the first armor tier. Uh, zombies can and you can pick it up and done you don't have to spend the 500 salvage gotcha. but it's very rare that they do that so and then the weapons it's like 500 a thousand then mm. 500 a uh, high grade salvage and then i believe a thousand high grade salvage to get it to the highest tier <clears throat> um and then after that you can actually re-roll what attachments are on the gun um if you wanted to do that so if you didn't spawn in with the gun and you picked it up off the wall and don't like the attachments you can do that uh, the, uh, hmm. one, one of the only other things we need to cover actually is, uh, this ammo cache. Um, so these are spread around the map. Remember, uh, how I said that, uh, wall weapons work a little bit differently in this. Mm -hmm. So if I, in, in other, every other game, if I walked up to this and bought it, it would give me ammo for the gun that I'm using. It would cost either, uh, 250 points if it's not pack a punched or 5,000 points if I believe, or maybe 2,000 or something if it is pack a punch. Um, in this, if I walk up to this and buy it again, it'll just give me a different version of the weapon. Oh. It'll give me the weapon again, but with a different set of attachments on it. Instead, you buy ammo through the weapon cache. It costs 250 points for a non-pack-a-punch weapon, mm. and then that price goes up 
every time you pack a punch your gun. Uh. So there are three tiers of pack a punch. There's first tier, second tier, and third tier. The first tier costs three or three five thousand points, just like it does in every other zombies game. The second tier costs fifteen thousand points, uh, and then the third tier costs thirty thousand points. Now, by the time you need a third tier pack a punch or a triple packed a weapon, um, you're going to be swimming in points, so it's not going to be that big of a deal. But uh, I recommend trying to make sure that after you've got your perks like jug and stuff, or and, and I don't mean your perks as in all of them. I mean, like after you've bought jug, the very next thing you should do is pack a punch your gun and then maybe go buy quick revive and uh, maybe stamina up or something and then pack a punch your gun again uh, once you get to 15,000. So like pack a punching should be a very high priority because uh, of those uh, megaton zombies because they, they have such a, uh, you know, such a lot of health. Such a lot of health. Um, let me think if there's anything else in terms of buyables and buildables. Here's a, an example. This is actually the only weapon on the map, map that you can buy at damage tier four. Um, oh. And it's a snipper rifle. But it's a snipper rifle. Yeah. Um, here's a dead shot. Here's a hole. Yeah. Oh, uh, buying perks. Uh, your perk, perk, your perk. first perk always costs you 250 points. Mm. Uh, your second perk that goes up by 500 points every time. So if your first perk is 200 or 250, 2,500 points. Ah. Your second perk is 3,000 points. Oh. Your uh, uh, fourth perk is 3,500. Your fifth perk is 4,000 points. Well, that's good to know. Your six, uh, sixth per- perk is 4,500 points. Um, and like I said, you can buy uh, every perk um, on the map. Um, the mystery box. We didn't go over the way the mystery box works. Uh, it's, it works exactly the same as it does in every other fucking game. Um, where, uh, uh, it's always a mystery. Yeah, exactly. Not what it seems to be. Um, so here's an example. So see, he's dead, but he's like, his health ah. was, was completely drained, but he was still standing there. Gotcha. Um, and then let's see if I can get it to happen to another one. And see, uh, my thing is, uh, uh, is blue again, which means that it's ready to go again. So yeah, so I can shoot him and he he he'll he just keeps standing there. Interesting. But I'll do it again, and uh, on a on a probably another zombie, and then we'll see what happens when I knife him. Um, but so the mystery box over here always costs nine hundred fifty points unless you get the last power up that I actually didn't talk about a fire sale. That's a big tag that says mm. sale. Um, when you pick that up, every mystery box location will spawn in. Instead of only being at one location, and it only costs you uh, ten points to hit the mystery box. Yeah. So when you get a fire sale, which they are very fucking rare in this game, uh, it's a good idea to yeah see. But then when I melee him, oh, I guess do you have to have a knife to do that? You might actually have to have the knife. Um, so there's a good reason. Do you see how much fucking damage I was doing, dude? This isn't even pack a punch, dude. Um, but you could see. There's a little lightning bolt next to uh, the damage yeah. uh, when I actually am doing damage. See? There's a little yeah. lightning yeah. bolt there. Yeah. Yeah. So, fuck you guys. You guys are going to fuck me like you always do. Elites, man. I always fucking go down because of the elites. Yep. Ain't that just the way? Yeah. Um, but that's basically it. Like, once you hit the box four or five times, uh, you'll get a teddy bear... In this case, it's a bunny, I think, in this game. Um, and it'll move the location. The way that you can tell where the mystery box is, is there's a beam of blue light uh, emitting from it. Right. Um, so you can, once the mystery box despawns, you want to see where it is again, you just look up, find that light, uh, and it'll show you. The light will show you the way. Um, do you see that C4 shit, dude? It's crazy. And then... Uh, I think I focus too much on killing the elites. I think that's. I mean, that's. I will say that's advice that you gave me when we were playing online, because I was like, I can't, I can't kill the elites because all the zombies always fucking get to me. But you're, and then you were like, um, it's not a bad idea to pick off the zombies first. Yeah, 
Yeah, I don't even follow my own goddamn advice. You don't even follow your own god-given advice. Yeah. Um. So, uh, let's see. Um. I talked about like what the mystery box is. It's a box of mysteries. <laughs> oh, it doesn't look like you have to have a knife. I don't know. It probably best to, you know, upgrade your knife so that you knife instead of gun butt anyways. Here's a fun fact for you. If you kill a zombie with a gun butt, it actually adds the experience uh, to your gun level. Really? Yeah. So you can level up a gun through gun butting. Interesting. Um, but once you upgrade that and he spawns in with the knife, it takes that away. Oh, so. that makes sense. Um, oh, that was the last thing. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure I'm cover I've covered everything that I don't consider an Easter egg. Like I said, we'll talk about the Pack-A-Punch machine and how to build it in the next step. So there's one more thing, and that is the uh, the Wonder Fizz machine. So there's only... I'll show you where it is. There's only one location for it. And um, the only way to access it is in the Dark Ether until you get past, I believe it is round 15, when the Dark Ether starts leaking into the main uh, uh, realm or the main uh, whatever it is um this is the oh, oh. this is where the wonderfish machine is it's on top of knocked and what this allows you to do is buy any perk from this one location oh. so i could buy jug here and then you can see now the rest of them cost 3000 points um this is a very easy way to just buy all your perks if you don't want to run around and find them all um but uh, like I said, it's it's pretty far in before it actually shows up, like in the base map. So otherwise, you can only access it through one of those portals, uh, to in into the dark ether. Um, and then there's also uh, just as like a little side note, although this isn't super important because frankly, I never use these things. When you're in the dark ether, or again, once the dark ether starts leaking into the regular world, uh, there's also portals like a uh, uh, transport portals uh, wow. that will transport you to a different part of the map. So it's quick, quick travel portals. Um, boop, and see now I'm in knocked. So, um, but that's that. I think is it. So uh, that that should be everything. Um, I'm just making sure that there's not anything I'm missing because we're gonna be moving on then. Um, moving on, it's a simple thing. <laughs> what it leaves behind is hard. Hard like ether crystals. Um, yeah, that should be it. So, uh, when you kill a zombie, they float up in the dark ether. Oh my god. Um, <laughs> and there's giant, uh, yeah. jellyfish in the What's dark ether. What's up with that? Yeah. What's up with that? What's up with that? Um, so that's, that's it. Uh, that should be everything for buyables and buildables. So, um, let us know in the comments down below. Oh, wow, uh, if wow. you learned anything, uh, about this game, I'm tired, dude. I'm, I'm getting hungry. I'm getting sleepy boy too. Yeah. Um, if you learned anything and, uh, next time on Totally Original Let's Play, we will move on to the last part, part step seven Whoa. Easter eggs oh, well, where God. we will learn. This is the one if, if you've been following along, this is the one that you're going to want to tune in for because this is where I'm going to teach Zane how to do uh, the all the Easter eggs in the map. Pack a punch. Uh, building the wonder weapon. Oh, man. Um, what the wonder weapon even is and what it does. He hasn't seen it yet. I haven't even seen it yet. Um, and as well as the uh, how to get free jug. Um, free? Yep, how to jug? get free Juggernog. Uh, and also uh, the actual main Easter egg. Um, I will show him the steps to that, how to upgrade the Wonder Weapon, how to get to the boss fight, how to beat the boss fight on solo, and we will actually test Zane's metal. Ah. Um, so uh, you will absolutely want to tune in for that. And uh, that's it, so goodbye. Wah. Do -do -do -do. If you're watching this in the future, make sure you click on the left to see the next episode. If you haven't made it to the future, click on the right to check out another series. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe so that you get notified when we come out with new videos. Uh, if you live in Oregon, uh, can you ask my cousin to give my snorkel back?